This year, Samsung has some pretty compelling devices on the high end with its Galaxy S22 lineup. But let's be honest, if you're watching this video, you're looking for something maybe a little bit cheaper or simply don't need all that bleeding edge technology that's packed into those devices. This year, is the Galaxy A53 from Samsung. A mid-range smartphone with some decent cameras, good performance, and most importantly, a sticker price that's not gonna break the bank. So with that, let's jump into our review of the Galaxy A53 and see what it has to offer. Let's address the price right off the bat because I think that's one of the most compelling features of this phone. Samsung is selling the Galaxy A53 5G for just $450, making it one of the most compelling mid-range smartphones right now on the market, especially here in the US. Last year's Galaxy A53 was an okay device, but this time around Samsung's improved quite a bit on this smartphone while also cutting the price by $50 versus the $500 that they charged last time around. Out of the box, the Galaxy A53 is running on Android 12 with Samsung's One UI 4.1. If you've used any of Samsung's other smartphones that are running Android 12, you should be pretty familiar with the overall software feature set here. The new customization options from Android 12 are fun to play with, but you'll have to do a little bit of digging into the phone settings to really tell if this phone is actually running on Android 12, because it honestly doesn't look that much different than previous iterations of One UI. UI. Overall, the software is good and pretty well-rounded, but I have to say that for me, One UI feels a little bit dated at this point. It did feel really refreshed in 2019 when they overhauled the entire platform, but compared to Google's new Material U design that they rolled out with Android 12, Samsung's latest software just feels a little outdated at this point. But there is some good news when it comes to the software on this device, and that's because the Galaxy A53 is actually gonna be getting four years of Android updates and five full years of security patches as well, matching Samsung's same commitment that it made to its flagship tier devices as far as updates go. And even though I'm not a huge fan of the user interface, Samsung deserves a whole lot of credit for all the extra work that it's putting in to ensure that even its mid-range phones are gonna be running the latest version of Android in a full four years, even beating out what Google has committed for its Pixel tier devices. So if software updates are important to you and you're looking for a budget-friendly or mid-range device, this phone is definitely one to look at. Now, before we move on, let's take a quick break to highlight Casetify, the sponsor for today's video. The only real solution to ensure that your device stays looking like new for months or even years on end is a case. Sure, you could walk into any store and buy a generic smartphone case that looks just as boring as it feels, or you can pick one up from Casetify that offers 6.6 .6 feet of drop protection and designs that'll perfectly match your style and your mood. And if you need even more protection than that, the Ultra Impact or their Ultra Impact Crush cases have beefed up corners that deliver drop protection up to 9.8 feet. And if you don't believe me, let's just give it a try. The case, I'll admit, is a little bit scuffed up, but the phone is scratch-free and working perfectly. And not only will Casetify protect your phone from physical damage, like a drop, but the case also features antimicrobial protection that'll eliminate 99% of bacteria, because in this day and age, you can't be too careful. With all of these designs, you honestly can't go wrong with Casetify. There are hundreds of design options to choose from, or you can even go the custom route and have them print your name or a custom message on the back of the case and truly give it your own personal touch. Be sure to check out the link in the video description to get a 15% discount on your new Casetify smartphone case. Thanks to Casetify for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to the Galaxy A53. Samsung's been known for using high-end displays on its flagship tier devices for years now, but that same treatment is finally trickling down to the Galaxy A53 this year with a gorgeous 6.5 inch Full HD Plus AMOLED display that also sports a 120 hertz refresh rate. And while the bezels might not be as thin as they are on the S21 FE, or even the display being as bright as the Galaxy S22, it still works really well in direct sunlight light and the viewing angles on the Galaxy A53 are really good as well when you compare it to the competition. 
You'll definitely have a much better visual experience if you upgrade to one of Samsung's more expensive devices. There's no denying that. But honestly, this is one of the best smartphone displays that I've ever used on a $450 smartphone. It's just that good. If you're a Samsung fan, you're probably well-versed in the continued debate about Exynos versus Qualcomm, which devices will be getting which chipset and which markets those devices are gonna be heading to. And typically in the US, we go with Qualcomm chipsets, but with the Galaxy A53, Samsung is changing things up a little bit by using the same Exynos 1280 SoC in all global variants of this smartphone. So regardless of whether or not you're a fan of the Exynos chipset, this phone actually has really good 5G connectivity and also doubles the performance of what we saw on last year's Galaxy A52. Only having six gigabytes of RAM doesn't seem to cause any issues with this device, but I know a lot of people would really love to see eight gigabytes of RAM in an ideal situation, but honestly, meeting that $450 price point is probably impossible if you go that route. As far as the performance goes though, it's still a far cry than what you would get from the Galaxy S21 FE, but the phone can definitely hold its own when gaming. With a few settings tweaks, Genshin Impact actually runs quite well on this phone, and games like Fortnite or even Call of Duty Mobile run even better. In day-to-day -day use, the phone feels quite snappy, but there are the occasional slowdowns here and there when pulling up the multitasking windows to switch between applications. And I even ran into a couple issues when pulling up the keyboard from time to time where it would lag for two to three seconds. I imagine these issues have more to do with software optimization than the chipset on the inside of the phone. So I'm hoping that they'll be fixed with a future update. Battery life on the Galaxy A53 is also one of the phone's major selling points with a 5,000 milliamp hour cell. That's a huge improvement over the 4,500 milliamp hour battery that we got on last year's A52. And this delivers a 32% improvement in our battery benchmark test. With heavy use, it's not quite good enough to go two full days on a single charge, but you'll definitely have a hard time draining the battery completely in a single day. After 14 to 16 hours off of the charger, the Galaxy A53 typically left me with roughly a 40% charge on the average day. And while those numbers are definitely commendable, the charging speeds of this phone are a little bit disappointing. Samsung claims to offer 25 watt fast charging though. In our test, we saw a maximum of 22 watts and that's only until you reach 15% charge and then the numbers drop off from there, which means charging the 5,000 milliamp hour battery on the inside of the phone takes a full 90 minutes. And that's after you bring your own charger since of course the Galaxy A53 doesn't come with a charging brick in the box. And to wrap things up, let's talk about the cameras. The main camera on the back of this phone is a 64 megapixel sensor that also features optical image stabilization, a feature that you really don't see at this price point that often. The other cameras though are pretty basic with a 12 megapixel ultra wide and then two five megapixel sensors for the macro and the depth camera. This if you're paying attention, is the exact same setup that we saw on last year's Galaxy A52. But honestly, that's not necessarily a bad thing since the camera performance on last year's device was one of its best features. Images from the main camera are sharp and colorful, delivering a lot of detail and great dynamic range, though there is that typical Samsung oversaturation that you typically see on these devices. The results are honestly pretty close to what you might be able to get out of the Galaxy S21 FE, but you'll definitely be able to tell the difference when you're matching up photos and videos side by side against Samsung's flagship tier devices from this year or even last year. The optical image stabilization does help out quite a bit in low light conditions, allowing the camera to pull in a lot more light than it typically would and deliver great colors as well. The ultra wide camera isn't quite as sharp due to its fixed focus lens, but it still manages to deliver some nice shots when you need a wider field of view than what's offered by that main camera. As for the 32 megapixel selfie camera, I have to say it performs incredibly well when you consider the price. Just make sure you turn down Samsung smoothness filter in order to ensure that you're getting the sharpest images possible. But overall, the shots really turn out really great with incredible dynamic range, which means the sky or pretty much anything else that you have in the background isn't gonna be blown out when you're capturing your selfies. 
But what makes this even better is that Samsung delivered 4K video capture from the selfie camera as well, matching the same 4K video resolution at 30 FPS that they delivered for the main camera and the ultra wide camera on the back of this phone. Now, I know that for a lot of you, 4K video capture from the selfie camera may not sound like a big deal, but when you still have thousand dollar smartphones that are being sold today that only have 1080p video, the fact that Samsung was able to enable the feature on a $450 device is definitely commendable. As I mentioned before, Samsung really has some incredible devices this year, but if you are on a tight budget, the Galaxy A53 is an incredible option. For $450, there's really nothing else on the market right now that can compete with this, especially here in the US market. But if you are willing to wait things out just a little bit, Google has its $450 Pixel 6a coming out in July, right around the corner. And I honestly think it'll give the Galaxy A53 a run for its money. And that's gonna do it. Let me know what you think of Samsung's Galaxy A53 down in the comments and whether or not you're gonna be buying one for yourself or maybe if you're gonna be waiting just a little bit longer for Google's Pixel 6a. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.